Do you get annoyed with having to unbolt your hot end cover every time you want to change a nozzle or get to your hot end? Do you want better part cooling in a simple package? In this video, I'm going to show you how to print and install the Minimus hot end cooler. This assembly fits on most Ender style printers plus some others and gives you some good improvements over the standard hot end cover. And the best part is it costs next to nothing. Depending on which version you choose, this is a modification that can be 100% printed on your standard machine and the stock fans just slot in place. And if you're not sure if it's going to fit on your machine, then there's a test file that you can print and try for free. I wish I could say that I designed this myself, but I didn't. Instead, I saw it on a Facebook group. I thought it looked clever, so I contacted the designer. The Minimus Hot End Cooler is designed by Paul Elrod. Paul has been designing and 3D printing his own parts for around 10 years and is selling the STL files for this kit for a measly $2 at the moment, which is a steal considering what you get. So before we look at how easy it is to print and assemble the Minimus cooler, I'm just going to tell you why I decided to make a video about this mod in the first place. Personally, I'm not a big fan of printer modifications that don't actually improve the performance of the machine. To me, those are customizations, which is fine, but they often don't offer much in the way of functionality, and some of the worst cases actually make your printer worse. In the most part, modern 3D printers are pretty well designed and generally work quite well out of the box. Sometimes the best improvements can be upgrading to higher quality components or redesigning assemblies to make them work better for you. The Minimus helps achieve both of these goals. Paul is a big fan of snap together mechanisms and his mantra is no bolts. He's therefore designed the Minimus to simply unclip and move out of the way for quick, easy access to your hot end. I change between different size nozzles pretty regularly and this is a feature I love. The end of three version two doesn't have the worst designed hot end cover, but you still need to find an Allen key to undo a bolt from the back anytime you want to change the nozzle correctly. Also, another great feature of the Minimus, and I think the main reason why most people will want to grab the files from Paul, is that it enables dual duct, dual fan part cooling. As I'm sure you know, FDM 3D printers melt filament and extrude it onto the workpiece. You want this filament to solidify pretty quickly to avoid it moving after it's been extruded. This can be particularly noticeable with sagging on overhangs. Also, what you definitely want to avoid is trying to lay melted filament onto still hot filament. This is a particular problem on tall narrow prints where you want to put another layer down on top of a layer that's just finished. To get round this, 3D printers blow cool air onto the extruded filament to try and cool it quicker. This seems to be an area where many manufacturer designs fall short and often having to wait for a layer of filament to cool is the limiting factor when trying to reduce a print time. A common modification for people trying to speed up their print times and generally improve the quality of their 3D prints is to improve the part cooling and even add additional fans and ducts. Some of the designs, although looking spectacular, can do what they set out to do, but at the cost of added weight. Not so with the Minimus cooler. Every gram added to your hot end is just more weight that the x-axis stepper motor has to get moving, and also more inertia for it to stop. With print head movement starting and stopping thousands of times per print, even the smallest amount of extra weight can affect the quality of your prints. Paul has designed his cooler with weight saving in mind, and has literally made it as minimal as possible. Hence the name Minimus. I weighed the stock setup and the 3D printed parts, and even the largest 3D printed parts come out 15 grams lighter than the stock setup. The standard Creality fan that I add for the dual fan setup is only 13 grams, so even with an additional fan it still comes in lighter than the standard assembly. That's impressive. If you don't like the standard Creality units, then the Minimus gives you options for using different size fans. And, as I've mentioned, you can add an additional part cooling fan and duct that blows on the other side of the nozzle. This ensures that there are no blind spots when it comes to cooling extruded filament. What Paul's design also does is directs air over the hot end heat sink that you want to stay as cool as possible, whilst also directing it away from the heat block that you want to stay hot. Many designs, including the standard hot end cover, just blow air in the general direction of the hot end and hope for the best. In basic terms, this should help your nozzle heat up quicker and then use less energy to stay at the correct temperature while printing. So the hot end cooler gives easy access, options for better part cooling, and it should give better hot end cooling efficiency without the usual penalty of additional weight. Awesome. So now we know we want one, how do we print and attach it? I've obviously provided a download link in the description where you can get all of the files. Once you've downloaded everything, you'll find a multitude of files to choose from. This can seem a little daunting at first, but if you actually read the readme file and look at all the images, it'll all start to make sense. Very simply, start by choosing what fans you want to use. Paul has designed versions of the Minimus that take all of the most common fan sizes. If you don't want to change your fan and just want to use the standard Creality units, then you have 4010 fans and a single cooling fan. So choose the 4010 single file for the Minimus 4010 folder. Likewise, choose a backplate to suit. If you want to also give support to wiring, then choose a file that's labelled for wire management 
and then select file depending whether you have a bed probe or not. I have a CR Touch, standard fans and want to support my wiring. So I'm choosing a file labelled backplate BL underscore CR 4010 underscore WM for wire management. The ducts slot in the bottom and are similarly labelled. Paul has added some built-in supports for some of the files which are used and it makes things easier. If you've chosen to use wiring support then also print the Armadillo Flex sample. This is a genius design which gives you excellent cable support. It's easy to print with the included supports and it's flexible to move with your printer components. The file is 100mm long but it actually prints two pieces together so you end up with 200mm of flexible cable support. I'm sure I'm going to find other uses for this clever print file. If you want different sizes then for another couple of dollars Paul has all different sizes available to download. I started by printing the simplest version of the Minimus that just takes the standard fans. I printed it in PLA Plus and following Paul's settings matched with standard Cura profiles, everything fitted together really well with minimal cleanup. It's very simple to unscrew the fans from the standard Ender 3 version to hot end cover, and there's no need to mess with any wiring if you use this setup. However, if you want to add an extra fan for cooling or you want to upgrade to higher quality fans, then you'll have to wire them in. If, like me, you want to use the Armadillo wire conduit, then you'll need to keep your wiring as slim line as possible. You can simply solder them for the smallest profile, but if you can't or don't want to solder, then you can use these crimp terminals. They do a similar job, but are much cheaper and easier if you can't solder. Wire both part cooling fans in parallel, or if your printer supports it, you may want to wire to an additional fan plug on your mainboard. Just ensure that both fans are turning on together and are running at the same kind of speed. After initially installing the single fan option out of PLA+, I used this setup to print out a dual fan option in PETG. I wanted to use a filament with a higher melting point so that there'd be a little more heat resistance. However, the PLA Plus stood up fine to the 240 degree hot end temperature I used to print the PETG, so it's probably fine. So how does it perform? Well, it can be pretty difficult to show airflow visually, but one method that Paul, the designer of the Minimus, showed me is this one. By slowly lowering the hot end towards water with the fan on, you can actually see where the air is being directed. With the standard fan and cover, there seems to be some good airflow, but it's directed quite far below the nozzle and obviously only on one side. With the single fan version of the Minimus, it all looks pretty similar, but the air seems to be a little more focused and aimed slightly higher than with the standard cover. With the dual fan Minimus, you can see a good amount of airflow all around the area just below the nozzle. Hopefully, this can give some good all-round cooling with no blind spots. To see if there are any real tangible differences in print results, I've sliced a simple 10mm tube, set it at 25 degrees, and then spiralised the outer contour. This ensures that I get a continuous bead of filament with no stopping and starting after the fan has come on. I selected 70mm per second print speed in Cura, and then I plan to manually speed the print up on the machine until I get to the point of failure. If I'm able to speed up to a higher speed with any of the versions of setup, then it shows me that that version is working more efficiently to cool the filament. So to start with, using a completely stock fan and cover on my Ender 3 version 2, I was able to increase the print speed up to 330% before a noticeable drop in quality. With the same single cooling fan but with the Minimus setup, I was able to increase the speed up to 380%. This actually really surprised me. All we've actually done here is changed the shape of the airstream and moved it by a couple of millimetres. Don't forget you can get the same results with no rewiring, no bought components and just a couple of hours of printing. When I added the second fan and duct, I was able to increase the print speed up to 420%. I was obviously expecting this to be better than with a single fan as we've doubled the amount of air blowing on the filament, but it's still very good. When I initially saw a quick video of this hot end setup, I was mainly interested in the way it clips on and off quickly without tools. However, what I wasn't prepared for was the weight saving and huge gain in cooling efficiency. For just a few dollars, I can't imagine you'll find a better option if you want to take advantage of any of these benefits for yourself. Don't forget there are links to everything mentioned in this video in the description if you want them. Let me know in the comments what your favourite printable mod is for your 3D printer. I'd love to see some of them. If you want to see how to improve your print quality further with some calibration, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.